TVs and shit. I'd say we park it right over here to jump out and hit that beach, guys. Let's get these samples. Alrighty. Let's get over there. Let's make sure we got what we're looking for. Yeah. Let's get some more pavement. I got another one. All right, all right. Look at this. See the oil on the beach? You see that? Yeah. That's all oil. Slimy, right? See the, see the oil funneling in the water? Is it? Well, it's got oil in it, that's for sure. Well, I'm no professional or anything, but what I'm seeing is oil every time I step huddling up and going out to the ocean. If I saw this on my home beach, I'd be in absolute tears. What we've done is taken a couple samples here to collect send it to a laboratory and find out what is actually in this. This is all oil. You should take a sample from some of this. Hold on, hold on. Ugh, God, that's disgusting. Hold on, I, I'm not, I'm not really. Can you do it in this middle session? Yeah, every boat that we've seen in this uh, marina that we're in right now is completely covered in oil. You know, and there's little sea otters swimming around on them. And it's, it's all bad. It's just heartbreaking. Okay, what we've got here, these are some of the samples we took yesterday from Grand Isle Beach. Those are the gloves. Do you want to uh, take them out of the gloves? Yeah. We're going to tell FedEx there's no hazardous materials in these packages. <laughs> Good morning, world. We're on the corner of uh, Toulouse and uh, Bourbon Street in New Orleans here. We just got back from Grand Isle, went and got these samples. It was pretty amazing. We, uh, we ran into a, a couple of uh, a workers that were working on the boats, some safety officers, uh, which will, will remain nameless, and um, they invited us to go have a beer at the local bar out there in Grand Isle. And uh, after a couple of beers, they introduced us to one of their uh, co-workers who had collected um, oil 20 miles out on his boat and uh, had given us a sample straight out. Now all we can do is send these out and, uh, and get some answers. You know we got we got this one from the shore break in Grand Isle. We got this one from uh, the rock jetty in Grand Isle right there at the very end. They call it the end of the world actually which is ironic but that's where we were. And then this is the one that we got from 20 miles out. You can see the oil blob right there. Uh, there is a lot of something that is not oil in the in the in the oil 
booger, if you will, inside the water sample. And uh, that's why it wasn't acting really like oil. Now, I think a big clue was the other, were the results for the propane dial. Now, when we call, I, I have a guesstimate, well, I have an estimate here of how much is in there. Now, I, the number I came up with was 430 parts per million. Okay, that's, uh, it is, that sounds, it's actually a very large number for propane dial in water. Okay, that's, that's how much, that's how much water, how much we're getting from the water. Uh, what does that mean? The, what does that mean? Well, let me put it this way. The, the propane dial is actually part of Corexit. Okay? So if I'm measuring uh, 430 parts per million of propane dial in water, in the water itself, this is just one part of Corexit. The Corexit itself has to be a much bigger number. And it turns out that the toxic level for Corexit for fish is 25 parts per million. So we're measuring at least 400, and 25 is toxic in water. And if you're in the presence of oil, and the fish encounters oil with uh, mixed in with Corexit, it drops down to 2.61, uh, 2.6 parts per million is being toxic. So the sample you handed me was probably about, uh, about 150 times the toxic level for fish. How's that for a starter? <laughs> You're kidding me. No, I am not kidding you. The, so that's just for the propane dial. Now that means the fact that the propane dial is in the water means that the crux, the, red, the other compounds of crux, it must also be in the water. And that means anybody, that means this water is, well, like I said, the fact that it was mixed with oil, that you had a sample there with oil in it, that means that, that the level of crux in that water was about 150 times the toxic level for fish. And uh, for people, that also certainly means that the number is, is way high, way too high. From what I'm seeing here, that you don't even have to be able to see, you don't even have to see the oil to be exposed to crux because the crux is in the water, not, in the oil, not only in the oil, it's in the water itself. Because uh, this, this GC I ran, uh, I drew away from the oil. I did not get oil into your sample, into the sample. It was in, it was just water. So I put just water in the machine. I'm getting 430 parts per million propylene glycol. And then, of course, uh, the propylene glycol is considered to be a minor component. And that's the stuff I was measuring. The, the, the propylene glycol itself is, four, is 430 parts per million. That's just the propylene glycol. That's not the others. That does have to be even higher. If you add up all the components, that, that wire was just, was just jammed with the stuff. The thing is that, this, that the, the level that you find on services is, is many times higher than was needed to kill fish. This stuff is hitting the beaches and is coming up as sea spray and people are breathing it. And that can explain, you know, if you're swimming in this stuff, if you're breathing this stuff, if you're breathing, you know, you're swallowing this stuff, uh, you're going to have problems. It's, it's, uh, it reminds me, I mean, when I'm uh, thinking about, you know, those commercials from the, the governor of Florida saying, don't worry, everything's fine, come on down. Okay, that reminds me of that, that time that the EPA told the people at Ground Zero that there was no asbestos in the air. But there was. Okay, the, I don't know where they're getting their information, but this, this water is poisonous.